to our neighbor. For we are members of one another. Good morning. And uh, that, that didn't happen, needless to say. Um, so a few announcements are um, on the February 10th at 7 o'clock, we will be having a special church conference. It will be held on Zoom. So uh, the Reverend Dale Min will be provide, uh, presiding over that. Um, if, uh, if you want information on tuning into the Zoom link, please email me and let me know, and I will be more than happy to forward that to you. Um, trying to think if there's any other announcements I needed to make at this time. I can't, yeah, I can't think of any. Um, well, if one comes to me later, uh, you know, we'll uh, <laughs> forth and punt and go for it. Well, at this time, I will ask Patty to come forward and lead us in our gospel lesson for today. Good morning. The gospel lesson for today is Mark 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he had taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, three friends decided to go hunting together. One was a lawyer, one was a doctor, and the other a preacher. As they were walking along came a big buck. The three of them shot at the same time, and the buck dropped immediately. Sorry for you animal lovers. I know. I know. You're heartbroken already. But it happens, you know. The hunting party rushed to see how big it actually was. Upon reaching the fallen deer, they found out that it was dead, but had only one bullet hole. A debate followed concerning whose buck it was. When a game warden came by, he offered to help. A few moments later, he had the answer. He said with much confidence, the pastor shot the buck. The friends were amazed that he could determine that so quickly and with so little examination. The game warden just smiled. It was easy to figure out. The bullet went in one ear and out the other. Yeah. 
guess, just like a sermon. Okay, Betty, it's your turn. <laughs> Good morning. Um, you know, we all need a friend, and I, this morning I'd like to play What a Friend We Have in Jesus. bow our heads in prayer as we call upon the living Lord to enter into our presence today. Most loving God, we thank you for the day, we thank you for the time that we are able to be together. May our service to you and to others be to your glory. May we remember who it is that sent us to be in service with one another. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. So now as a special treat, we have Bill with, that is going to uh, sing for us today. So Bill, come on up. The, the house is yours. Shine. 
grace alone which God supplies strength unknown he will provide Christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone Now, this morning's topic, um, I titled it, Unwanted Guests. Now, okay, so I haven't picked on her in quite some time. Now, this could be related to my mother-in-law. No, 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 I'm only kidding. I know she's watching. Um, I'm only kidding. She is not an unwanted guest. But did you ever have one of those unwanted guests? You know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you're sitting there um, watching uh, a good movie or watching TV, and, and you get that proverbial knock on the door, and you go over and answer it, would you like windows? Do you need a new roof? Do you want siding? Do you... <sighs> no. This is an unwanted guest. You're interfering with my entertainment. We have to be nice. We're, well, we're supposed to be nice. Um, it depends on what mood I'm in when they come to the door. Um, unwanted guests can come by telephone calls. Um, the, uh, the warranty is about ready to expire on your vehicle, and if you press one now, you can talk to our operator and see if you, know, you want to extend your warranty, and usually it's for a car that you've traded in six years ago. If the warranty is going to expire on that baby, let the new owner worry about it. Don't bother me. You know, I have ways of dealing with these people, um, and sometimes it's not too pleasant. Um, Patty can usually tell when I get that phone call, or anybody in the house really, uh, can tell when I get one of those phone calls that does not give me the chance to uh, press 9 to be put on the do not call list, which never works anyway. I don't know why they do that. But... Press 1 to speak to a live operator. That's the only option they give me. Okay. 
I'll press one. And then the phone goes over by the TV set and the volume goes up to 100. So they can listen to the show that I'm watching. So that they know they interrupted me at a very good time. Usually they hang up real quick. But in the, in, the, um, in the gospel lesson from Mark that Patty read this morning, there is an unwanted guest. There's actually two unwanted guests, depending on how you look at it. The first is Jesus. He was an unwanted guest. And the second was an unclean spirit that was possessing this man. Jesus comes into the synagogue to pray. Now, he was in Capernaum. If you, re if you remember correctly, and, and, and a connection, one of these, hmm, the main synagogue at that time was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, where Satan tempted Christ from the pinnacle. Jerusalem, where Christ would be judged beaten and crucified so there is a connection but so he's in Capernaum and he goes to the synagogue in Capernaum now every town had a synagogue but the most important one again is in Jerusalem but each town had their own synagogue um, and sometimes several synagogues but most of the time, or a lot of the times, they wouldn't go to the synagogue to worship. They went to each other's houses and worshiped God there. That was their new synagogue. Now, when Jesus walks into the synagogue, this unclean spirit that is possessing this gentleman turns around and says, you are the son of God. What would you have with us? Leave us alone. All Jesus did was walk in. And this unclean spirit knows who he is and announces it. Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit. Silence. Silence. You don't speak this. Jesus was keeping his identity a secret. He didn't want people to know that he was the Son of God. He was not looking for fame. He was not looking for fortunes. He was looking to save lives, heal lives. Take away the unclean spirits. So he didn't want anyone to know. And the unclean spirit left the man after throwing him on the ground, giving him convulsions. The unclean spirit bailed out. The leaders in the synagogue are, are seeing this, they are witnessing this and saying, well, wait a minute. Um, this guy comes in and he commands unclean spirits to leave with one word. Be gone. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? How can he do this? We can't even do that. The rabbis turn and say, wait a minute, we're here, we run this synagogue, this guy comes in, chases these evil spirits just by walking through the door. Oh, 
What is wrong with this? Who is this guy? Now, Jesus' fame starts to spread. People that witnessed this exorcism are spreading the word about Christ. But they still don't know by whose authority he is doing all this or who he is. He remains to keep it a secret. His secret would remain until his time. And it was when it became his time, then he turned around and announced, yes, I am the Son of God. God, whose authority has been given me to do these miracles. I don't... There's, there, there, there's people today that may or may not have unclean spirits in them, you know, um, it's questionable. Some of the actions that you see on the 6 o'clock news has got to be created by unclean spirits. How can anyone... How can anyone with clean spirit, clean spirit, okay, walk up to someone point blank, pull a gun out of their pocket, and shoot and kill them? And for no apparent reason. <laughs> Folks, what I'm saying is, is Satan is running amok in our world, in our lives, in our everyday living. And he is possessing with unclean spirits. So we have to protect ourselves. How do you do it? How do you do it? Well, here is our shield. Here is our weapon, our sword. This, this will stop the evil from entering into us if we just learn the words that are inside of it. They're there for us, not for just a reason to occupy pages in a book. Let us remember that we can turn our cares over to our God. And God will provide. Most gracious God, we, we come to you today in prayer. We come to you asking for your protection to keep us safe. Keep us safe from the unclean spirits that are out there trying to enter our bodies. Keep us safe from the evil one who is spreading these horrible feelings. We know that he is strong, but God, you are stronger. And we know that 
with you on our side, we will be safe and protected. And that Satan will never prevail. Good will always defeat evil. So God, we, we just thank you for, for being our shelter, our strength in this storm. Being by our side as we walk along. God, we are faced with temptations. But your son was faced with temptations too, and he defeated Satan by refusing those temptations. And let us learn from that experience, and let us refuse those evil temptations as well. But God, we, we come to you with, with concerns, concerns in our hearts and in our minds. And God, you, you, you call your prayer warriors to come and talk to you, speak to you, and pray for one another. So God, we're asking you to gather the prayer warriors again as we pray for Ricky Gregory Jr. He is the grandson of Everett. Um, and he's a 25-year-old fellow, and he's been experiencing seizures um, to where now the doctors have to, create, have to perform um, surgery on his brain to correct the issue. So God, we just ask you to be with the Gregory family as they face this time of trial and worry and concern. But we ask you to calm their spirit because you are in control. May you guide the hands of the surgeons. Don't let the surgeons pull their hands back because they feel extra hands on theirs. Because God, you will be there guiding them, we pray. And may his healing be strong and quick. We ask you, O oh God, to be with our brother Dick and sister Kathy as, as they try to uh, mend from their issues, their health problems. We ask you to be with our brother Butch, who we miss dearly, and we just ask that you continue to strengthen him and, and keep him on the straight and narrow on healing. Have them do, have him do what the doctors and nurses are telling him to do and stop being so stubborn. We ask you to be with our brother Linton, who we haven't been able to see in quite some time. Just ask you to keep him strong. Keep your hands on him, keep your eyes on him. We ask you to be with our brother John and sister Mary as they battle their health concerns. Just keep them comforted and knowing that you are in their presence. To be with our brother Hines and sister Margaret as they too battle their health concerns. And we ask you to be with Ted and Pauline as they try to strengthen. And we're happy that uh, they have gotten help to take care of them so that it gives Betty a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of ease. But know, oh God, that she is still very much involved in their healing and 
taken care of. Be with all those in our families that are struggling with marital strife, job issues. May they see the light at the end of the tunnel, and may they come out with a good outcome, a, an outcome that is favorable to you, O oh God. And we ask you just to keep a watchful eye over all of us as we prepare to face a very large winter storm that will be coming. We ask that you just be our co-pilot, keep us safe as we drive from place to place and get us through this storm and all the storms in our lives. They are many. So God, we also remember your son. Your son who fought off temptation. Fought off sin and death for all of us. We thank you for the words that he gave us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now a reminder, I knew there was another announcement I had to make. Uh, a reminder, next week is Communion Sunday, so make sure you have your bread and your cup so that we can partake of the Lord's Supper together. So now until we meet again, may God bless you, God keep you strong, hold you in the palm of his hands, keep his eyes on you, and keep you lifted from any trouble, any disease, any heartache. God will bless us. God is in control. Until we meet again. Amen.